I think that if you are a trader, um, there are some foundational skills that you just need to have. And one of those skills that you should be focusing on is going all in and scaling out because there is an incredible small difference between building a position and adding to a loser and adding to a loser is one of the dumbest things you can do as a trader. And if you scale out, it'll ensure that you are securing profits when the market is at least going in your favor. Um, and so for me, it's, it's a critical thing. Um, especially if you are going to day trade something like futures, the idea of scaling into a position can just get out of hand so incredibly fast. Um, and, uh, the, these are yeah very leveraged products. And so the ability to almost exclusively, I'll go all in and then scale out with the exception of sometimes the, the trade is meant to get in and to get out fairly quickly. Mm -hmm. And that might be like an all in all out situation. But, um, I find that in trading is a very dynamic thing that gets very messy yeah. and the likelihood that you enter a trade, it just goes right to your stop or it just goes right to your profit target. How often does that actually happen? You know, maybe two out of 10 times. Yeah. And then there's all this variation where it might get close and then roll back on you, or, it, you know, it, it might do all of these different things. And we start a trade with an initial amount of risk, but as that trade develops, the risk changes. Yeah. You might start off, you know, risking a hundred dollars to try and make three or $400. But then as that trade works on, you're now risking all of this open capital um, for the, maybe the chance at getting those few extra ticks. And, and so, yeah, these are things that um, I think to, to make up for the extreme amount of uh, risk that we have to do as, as traders and, and leverage on these products, it's very wise to do that. And the way that I usually look at it is um, the first scale out, a lot of times if you can get that close to one-to-one -one risk to reward. So if you're risking, you know, four points on a trade or something, if you can kind of get that first scale out close to that, um, that immediately, uh, depending if you're doing equal, let's say chunk outs, will cut your risk down like in a half or in a third. Mm -hmm. um, and then from there, I usually focus on taking a scale out for profit and then either ending the trade completely or looking for some type of a runner, if, you know, on the, sure, the market allows, which unfortunately this summer, there was not a whole lot of that going on <laughs> sure, sure. unless you wanted to sit there and watch paint dry for three hours. Um, yeah, definitely depends on market conditions, obviously, but I've, I've always found it really hard and you touched on it too, like unless you're building a position, right? So I've had trades where I have an, and you know, I'm never looking at like, Hey, it needs to get to this specific price for me to be in. I have an area where if the market's behaving how I would like it to for a setup in that area, I'll add. And sometimes I will go, you know, one lot there, maybe it moves against a couple ticks, another lot, but as soon as it moves to the point where that trade would be invalid, I'm not adding to it continually. Mm -hmm. Like I'm out. That's that's it. That's the risk. It's off for the day. If the trade didn't work out. Move on. Right. Um, I find that, like you said, when you're adding, you're already exposing yourself when you've got a trade that's working in your favor. It's this open profit that's potentially on the table. Right. When you're adding to a trade that's already against you and you continue adding, you're just magnifying and multiplying that exponentially. Right now you're in a hole where the next contract you add, you've just doubled the size of the hole you're already in. You may not even know it, but that that's what's happening, right? Um, yeah. It's never it worked for me. Yeah. <laughs> a very interesting dynamic. I was just talking with somebody about this and they were making the point that your emotional system has the ability to shut down your cognitive function. Yep. And this is one of the very dangerous things about trading. And I said it earlier, I think as new traders, especially, you have to learn certain skills. I think Entering on pullbacks is one of these skills. There's very little that separates a horrible entry from a momentum entry. Um, uh, uh, all in scaling out, you know, for these reasons. And, and one of those things is you don't know about yourself how you're going to respond. You might be totally level-headed when that trade begins, and then it starts to go against you. You add in because you're building a position, and then just takes that one time where you don't do the right thing, and it starts going against you even more. And then yeah. you, now you broke your rules, and now. You, the, the point being, avoid that situation again. Do not let yourself yeah. ever be in that position because it's extremely dangerous. And all of us, at times, we just don't know what something is going to do and how that's going to invoke an emotional response. And then we don't know how we're going to be behaving after that. It's very dangerous. 